We had zero expectations of Krakow, but boy were we surprised. From its beautiful tree-lined parks loaded with benches to take things slow, to detailed architecture and a deep history, we were absolutely smitten. Welcome back to Find Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. We arrived in Krakow via an overnight train. It was a little convoluted, a little crazy ride. So what'd you think of our uh, six-seater here? It was not the easiest train we've ever been on. Yeah. And it definitely wasn't luxury to be in this environment. We were coming from Switzerland. Uh, we have a video about that, the Glacier Express. It was really worthwhile to take that train ride, but getting from there to here, a little bit touchy. Yeah, that episode's coming soon, so subscribe if you haven't already. So we were really grateful that arriving in the wee hours without a lot of sleep and a lot of train riding behind us, that Krakow ended up being so lovely. We'll talk about what we spent at the end of the video and even have a bonus recommendation for you. One of my first impressions of Krakow was the public transportation system. The tram was really well situated where we needed to go from the train station to our Airbnb. Uh, the first machine we tried to buy tickets on wasn't working too well. I couldn't get the payment options. This is for the tram. Yep. But overall, the actual tram itself was very convenient. And you could also buy tickets in the tram itself. We were heading to the Jewish Quarter, which is also known as Kazmir's, and that was a beautiful area. So we highly recommend that. The food was delicious. And this area is very walkable too, so that makes everything very convenient about this part of the city. And speaking of walking, I felt drunk with power. So you can just keep walking. There's not a lot of traffic uh, signals and stuff. We're in uh, the Jewish Quarter, and it's quite surprising. Like, you will just stop traffic by starting to walk through, no matter how close the car is to you, they will always stop. Uh, there's no dance about, you know, well, I'm going to keep going because I see that you're nearby. Could make it dangerous for other places if we get spoiled by this <laughs> wander out. Yes. Proudy Ferry was definitely not that way. No, and a lot of Italy isn't either. Yeah. So language wasn't a real issue. Most people in uh, Krakow were actually speaking English. We didn't have too many issues with that. And uh, the currency, although it's not euros yet, the zwati is really convenient because about four zwati to every US dollar means that whenever you see a price on something, we were just dividing by four going, oh, that's actually not bad at all. Well, I was using a currency converter on my phone, but whichever way works. I was keeping it simple. <laughs> and it, is a more affordable city than a lot of other European cities, so makes it a good value. Yes. As with many European countries, universities are free here. You need to pass a certain level of grades to get accepted, but other than that, you're not charged for your time in the university. Unless you take longer than four years, but even what you have to pay is still way more affordable than what you'd have to pay in the U.S. And one of the best things about being a university city is that it also means that there's a lot of young people. And young people mean that there's a lot of good tech. It means that Wi-Fi is fast, which for us is amazing. It's blessing. <laughs> it was so good to be able to upload our videos without having to take a train somewhere. Right. And it also means that there's a lot of diverse food and so there's street food and you know I don't know that you could possibly be sick of Polish food but <laughs> if you wanted a break from it there are all sorts of flavors uh, we were near an Indian restaurant and there's sushi we were tempted a couple times to go to these places but we were only in Krakow for 11 days maximum so we really want to get the most out of our Polish food experience and there's a video about that if you want to check it out we'll put a link below Another nice part about Krakow was it was easy to get in and out of our Airbnb and start doing the daily things that we normally do, which is shopping and looking for coffee shops and restaurants. And it was also nice because there's convenience stores all over the place, which 
makes picking up just small foods that maybe we want to grab a, a sandwich or something for lunch or a snack. And I really like that there are a ton of museums here. We only had a chance to explore one and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it definitely makes us want to come back so we can explore more of them. And if you've watched any of our episodes, you know we love to have some water in a city, either a river or a lake nearby or the ocean. And this city has the Vistula River, which looks lovely and there's some nice bridges crossing over it. But unfortunately, be, our guide said because of the communist era of Poland, it got a lot of pollution. They didn't really care about the environment. And so it's not a safe river to go swimming in. But it's, I think, one of the largest rivers in Poland. So you could absolutely get on a river cruise and enjoy the water that way. Please excuse all of the mispronunciations that we will have in trying to speak about the Polish language, but Old Town is called Star Miasto, and its city center is Reinek Glavny. The W's are always pronounced V's, so we'll try to do the best we can to keep that <laughs> correct. The city center is actually the biggest medieval plaza in Europe at 40,000 square meters and was designed in 1257, so a medieval town. At the center of the square is a statue of Adam Mickiewicz, a famous Polish poet, built in the late 1800s, destroyed by Nazis, and then restored in 1955. It's an easy gathering place for our meetup, which we did meet up there with one of our guides. You can expect to see lovely horse-drawn carriages, so if you're looking for a romantic ride, definitely just head to the center of the city and you'll find one. And because it's not too hilly of a city, Krakow is a perfect place for a bike tour, which we enjoyed ours and move along really swiftly and we'll talk about it a little bit more later. But we'll leave a link below to our tour guide and see if you want to take that same tour. Krakow is steeped in lore and our guide told us a bunch of stories that may not be true. I said, I'll kill your dragon. What he did was, he got a sheep and he stuffed it full of spices and sulfur left the sheep in the mouth of the cave, dragged him out, saw the delicious sheep, ate it up. He was entertaining. <laughs> so let's start with St. Mary's Basilica. Every hour on the hour, a trumpeter from the fire brigade plays a tune called Hey Nal, which means dawn in Hungarian, but it always ends abruptly. According to legend, when the Mongols invaded in 1241, a sentry played the tune to raise the alarm, but he was struck by an arrow before he could finish. And now when they play it in tribute, they end it abruptly as well. The noon version of it is broadcast live throughout the world. The other thing to note about St. Mary's is the two towers. One is actually taller than the other, and there's a legend that two brothers were fighting over who could make the taller tower and one brother killed the other to win that battle, but then felt so guilty afterwards that he actually killed himself. I think the real story is that they deliberately kept one of the towers lower than the other so that they could get a bird's eye view of anybody trying to come and plunder the city, which is probably a little more believable anyway. <laughs> but where's the fun in that? <laughs> So going back to the lore, there's a knife hanging at the entrance to the cloth market from a hook. I'm thieves. If you get caught stealing from the market, you get your ear sliced off. Ironically, the knife has been stolen more than once. <laughs> <laughs> The Grumwald Monument commemorates the victory in 1410 by the alliance of the Polish and Lithuanian troops against the German-Prussian Teutonic Knights. You may have not heard of these guys before. They're also known as the Black Crusaders. They're famous for their white shields with black crosses on them. And they're formed during the Holy Crusades. Basically, they're like a horde of mercenaries. As a king, lord, baron, if you've got any problems with some pagans, any non-Christians, you can hire these guys and they'll kill them for you in the name you of You can God. understand why when Germany invaded Poland during World War II, they wanted to destroy the evidence of Poland's win against them. Fortunately, it was rebuilt in 1976. The Barbican is one of Europe's best preserved examples of an outer wall fortification built in medieval times. During medieval times, there were moats, which have now been filled in and have become the beautiful Planty Park which takes about an hour to do a full loop and is calming and beautiful with plenty of benches to sit and reflect.
We said that there are several universities here. One you don't want to miss is the Jagalonian University Collegium Maius, which means college major, and it was built in 1364. Two of the most famous students here are Copernicus and Pope John Paul II. There's a museum here as well that's focused on astronomy and medicine and more, as well as the oldest globe. Step into the courtyard for a real treat. Unfortunately, there's a lot of construction, so try to disregard that. We couldn't believe how well our guide timed it, but there's a musical clock that plays a 16th century tune every two hours. It's kind of hard to know where to look, but if you can find the clock itself, it's the two windows directly below it. This giant beige building is known as the Bishop's Palace. It was here where Pope John Paul II lived and worked as Archbishop of Krakow. He moved to Krakow in 1938 as an 18-year-old boy in order to study poetry at Jagiellonian University. But after the Nazi occupation the very next year, he changed his major to theology. You wouldn't know it being around Krakow, but there is an underground that we weren't really aware of as we were wandering. In the 12th and 13th centuries, a lot of the buildings were made of wood and there were constant fires destroying them. And so people would just build on top of what remained. You wouldn't even really know that there was this entire underground city. Now there's a bunch of bars and nightclubs and even some of the hotels have swimming pools under there. So if you have a chance to check that out, I'd highly encourage you to do it. The Rheineck Underground Museum is below the Cloth Hall in the main square. It's very interactive and shows what life looked like across the generations. You'll get the most out of this museum with a guided tour, and we've included a link below. Dragon's Den is a cave at the base of Vavel Royal Castle and Museum. It has rock projections, shafts, and was built 12 million years ago as a result of karst development in the Jurassic limestone. There are several legends regarding the dragon who lived inside and needed to be conquered. In the early 1970s, Poland built this fire-breathing dragon that blows gas away. And luckily we were there for one of these fire bursts. Again, our guide just timed everything perfectly. If you go across the river, you'll end up in the Ghetto Hero Square. The Nazis moved the people who lived here out of the area and forced the Jews into it because it had some natural borders. It became the Krakow Ghetto. This is where the Jews were forced to live before being deported to nearby Auschwitz and Plaskow concentration camps. So as you can see for dividing wall, it's not very big. It's not like the Berlin Wall. If you got somebody to boost you up, you can make it over this thing, no problem. And so this was just to tempt the Jews to try to escape, to give the Nazis an excuse to shoot them on the spot. Like I was saying to you earlier, if we were to walk from one end to the other, no more than 10 minutes, right? Try to imagine 18,000 people scrunched in such a small area. Most of these apartments have between 15 and 25 people living in them. The building that you can see behind the wall today is the original from the time of the ghetto, and people still live there today. What you're seeing today is a living monument that was built in 2005 using 70 larger-than-life chairs, one chair for approximately each thousand Jews who lived here. If you visit the old cemetery, it's overgrown because there are no longer family members living here to help maintain the graves. Above the shops in the main square is the National Gallery Museum. It's free on Tuesdays and there was a very long line when we were there. So get there early or avoid that day entirely and go on another day of the week. It holds 900,000 exhibits about Polish and foreign art. So there's definitely a lot to see. Another place to visit is Schindler's Factory Museum. We didn't get to see it ourselves, but the suggestion was to have a guide. Some people were a little disappointed that it wasn't still the layout of the original factory. They expected to be walking through this, but it's strictly a museum at this time. But definitely worth seeing. The Valeczka salt mine has been around since the Middle Ages and was recommended to us by several people. The salt mines are a UNESCO site where you go deep underground to explore historic mining tunnels, saline lakes, and intricate salt sculptures that were built over centuries. 
Unfortunately, we weren't able to go, but we do recommend it's again one of those places we want to visit. A lot of times it's combined with an Auschwitz-Birkenau tour. I would say not to do that. We found Auschwitz quite emotional and I think that it's better to kind of make two separate trips and have them be their own experiences. Yeah, if you've seen our video about Auschwitz, you know it took a toll on us and I think adding more to a day would be really hard. But if you haven't seen it and would like to, we we're linking it in the description. Krakow has a lot of dark history, but the Krakow Ghetto Pharmacy is worth seeing. It's now a museum and really well designed. If you're not at all familiar with Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, you might remember Mr. Rogers saying that in difficult times to look for the helpers. A Polish pharmacist was able to keep his shop open and protect Jews. He helped some escape and was able to provide food and medicine to them in secret. The pharmacy now is a great museum that spotlights the pharmacist and his three additional workers and all the ways they help the Jews. Much of the history we know today about Krakow Ghetto is attributed to what the pharmacist, Tadusz Pankowicz, journaled. He wrote a book and it's been interesting to read. It's available online in hardcover or paperback, but unfortunately there's no Kindle edition, so I'm lugging around a hardcover book for a while. And as for our bonus recommendation, if you want a panoramic view of the city, check out Dobra Atmosfera, which is a helium-filled tethered balloon you can ride. It only goes 150 meters high, but you get a perfect view of what Krakow looked like as a medieval city from above. It doesn't take very long. It's at least a 10 minute ride. It only costs 99 zwata, about $25. You do need to check in in advance to make sure weather conditions allow it to go up in the air. And it's not a real hot air balloon experience. If you wanna see one of those, we have a video about that too. We'll link it below. All right, let's go over what we spent. Our Airbnb in the heart of the Jewish quarter was $570.64 for 11 days, which breaks down to $51.88 per night. Which was too short of a stay for us. It cost $55.34 US per person for a four hour bike ride toward the city, which we thought was great. We took a day trip to Auschwitz and Birkenau for 120 euro, which included both of us. This cost a little more because it was half the size of most tours, 15 people versus 30. I'd recommend getting a smaller group if you can, but we did not enjoy Hello Krakow, so I wouldn't recommend that. We felt like the guide couldn't speak English very well and they were fairly disorganized. The tour company did provide us with a very nice sack lunch for 10 euros a piece. The Krakow Ghetto Pharmacy Museum was 18 zwata a piece and the hardcover of the book in English was 69 zwata. If you're interested in our food costs, check out our food tour of Krakow, where we break that all down for you. So, final thoughts. Final thoughts, I wish we could have had more time in Krakow. I think we did a great job of eating there, <laughs> and we did some nice tours, but there really is so much to see in that city, and it was so easy to get around. I feel like we could have done a lot more in a full month's day. We highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, it seemed like a gem in the cities of Europe that I didn't expect at all. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like. We would love to have you join our community, so consider subscribing if you aren't already. And check out FindingGeneMarie.com. We've got some new stuff coming there, and Judy's Journals there talks a lot about our tours in detail. Until next time. Until next time.